already everyone it has been a little while since I've done a wild game cooking video so I wanted to try something today um, I've got a piece of venison here it's out of the eye of round I usually tend to save this piece in bigger sections because it can be used for either a roast or a venison steak um, today I'm going to do something different with it today I'm going to do a stuffed cream cheese kind of pinwheel and uh, something I want to get out of the way right away is I'm not using cream cheese to disguise the flavor of venison. Venison is awesome on its own. It does not need cream cheese. It does not need bacon. It doesn't need to be stuffed with all sorts of crazy things to make it taste good. Venison tastes awesome on its own. If you think venison tastes gamey, I think you're probably just not used to what meat tastes like. So that is not why I'm doing this. I'm choosing to do this because I wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, normally I keep venison just as simple um, as can be, salt, pepper, or like obviously I love my musket powder on venison, but um, normally I don't do stuff like this, but I did want to give it a try today. So this is going to be real simple, and I am going to use a lot of musket powders white label. I just think this uh, white label kind of ranch flavored is going to pair awesome with some cream cheese. But uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to chop up an onion and dice a couple cloves of garlic so that um, I have something to stuff the inside of this uh, pinwheel with. So that's what I'm going to do first. Alright, so as usual guys, I am using my de facto knives. Uh, whether I'm butchering wild game, um, filleting fish, or cooking in the kitchen, these are the knives I like to go with. Um, you got to check them out. I'll put a link to some of their stuff in the description below. But they make Great carrying cases, it's awesome. I have a set that I just leave in my camping set, um, and it comes with everything you need. This one has a honing steel and just about every type of knife you would need for anything from butchering wild game to cooking in the kitchen or at the campsite. So I really, really like these knives a lot. Alrighty, I'm gonna chop this onion up real quick. And I really, for this small piece of venison to, to stuff, I really only need a half an onion. Just like always, razor sharp. I'm not the greatest like at cutting things up and dicing and chopping and things like that. So I am not really very good to show these knives off, but they are great knives, I do promise you that. They're very, very sharp and uh, they stay sharp too. Alrighty, I've got the onions starting in there. They're gonna go for about six to eight minutes. Then I'll add in that garlic I cubed off now for the most important step and this knife is awesome it's my favorite knife by de facto it's their 10 inch butcher knife this thing is just BA there's nothing it really can't do um, super big super sharp always gets the job done and it's perfect for something like this so I have this basically this square cube of meat kind of and what I want to do is towards the bottom of the cut of meat I'm gonna cut through it. You need it, need kind of a long knife for this, and I'm going to kind of keep it thin on the bottom, and I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to continue to kind of unroll this piece of meat. Oh, I broke through just a little bit, but now Instead of having a big thick cube, I've got this, I did accidentally cut through right there, that's okay. Um, but I've got kind of a flat piece of meat that I can use um, to stuff and roll. So what I need to do now, I am going to absolutely cover this thing in musket powder's white label. Um, I'm torn between what's my favorite in musket powder, white label or black label. They're both awesome. Um, I just think for this particular recipe, the white label might be a little bit better. But we're going to use a combo for both. So I got my meat absolutely covered with this white label rub. Alrighty, now what I'm going to do here is I got some cream cheese. And I'm just going to spread it across this meat. And it's important to note, 
this tub of cream cheese, there's only a little bit left, and this is the last thing I'm using it for. You obviously don't want to be rubbing raw meat, rubbing uh, cream cheese on raw meat and sticking it back in the tub. But uh, I'm just going to spread it out really thin. We don't want to go overkill, and we don't want to get it too far out to the edges. I don't want this thing just oozing out the side completely. We're just going to try to kind of keep a somewhat of a thin layer on there. Alrighty, that looks pretty good there. Now I'm going to take my black label and um, kind of season this cream cheese a little bit. This black label mixed with the white label, I've used this combo on lots of things and I really, really like it. I'm also, i got my onions going back here, going to hit these onions with just a little bit of black label in that pan with the butter as they're going. And these onions are starting to get translucent, so I'm going to put... I had like one giant clove of garlic uh, cut diced up there, so we're going to get that going. These onions look pretty well done. They're translucent, kind of floppy. Um, so we're going to get these spread across our meat. Now, we don't need to completely overload this thing and make it so that we can't roll it up. I already didn't do the greatest job cutting this. If you can get it completely even to where it's you know fairly thin, that's more ideal than this. I was kind of a hack job. But there, that looks good. We got all of our ingredients in here. We got the meat seasoned with white musket powder, white label musket powder. We got our cream cheese down. Um, the cream cheese, I put a little bit of black musket powder on, black label, and then I got my onions with the black label wrapped in there. So now, the goal is to try to roll this thing into kind of like a pinwheel. And we did break it on one side, so that kind of stinks. And these shish kebabs are way overkill. But you do want to do something to kind of protect the structural integrity of this thing. These shish kebabs aren't necessarily the uh, prettiest thing to look at, but they will protect it in the oven. And as you can see here, where I broke through, is some of this cream cheese is sticking out. So that's what you want to avoid. I accidentally cut all the way through, and uh, you don't want that. All right, so now how we're actually going to cook this thing, you know, you could do this on the grill. I would prefer that if I would have wrapped it a little bit cleaner. That's actually what I probably would have done. Um, and I am sure there is a better mechanism than this to do this. But I just have like an oven safe dish tray thing here. And then a rack that I can go on. And I want it up on this rack so that the heat can completely get around it. Um, this is kind of a wonky setup and there's probably better tools out there. So I'm going to put this on here. One thing I am going to do before that, I'm going to give it another hit of that white label on top. And then... I'm going to set this on the rack. Now I have an oven preheated at 450 degrees with the cut of meat like this. 450 degrees, 15 minutes or so should probably be good for this small of a cut and how thin, thinly it's sliced. I've had to experiment with this a little bit in the past. I have cooked this somewhat recently um, with a much bigger piece and it took 20 minutes to get, you know, kind of a medium rare, medium piece of meat with uh, stuff being all nice and gooey on the inside. So you kind of have to watch it, look at it in the oven, and babysit it a little bit, but that's what we're working with for now. Alrighty, I pulled this out of the oven. I actually ended up leaving it in there for about 20 minutes. It didn't look quite done at 15, um, so I left it in there, and then of course I let it rest. I let this rest for about 8 to 10 minutes, um, and now we're going to dig in. I can already tell that it's going to kind of fall apart and be a little bit messy. My wrap job and skewer job on this thing wasn't quite up to par. What I think might work better is some like string, some uh, kitchen string that you could tie around this to keep it, you know, together in a nice tight pinwheel. But it's not always about how pretty it looks. It's about how good it tastes and I know it's going to be good. So cleaned off my big old uh, de facto 
Butcher knife, I'm just going to cut this in half and see what we're working with here. Oh man. That looks great. Alright, unfortunately I am on a little bit of a diet right now, so I immediately threw the other half of that in the fridge. I'll eat that some other time. Even this is kind of cheating on my diet a little bit. I'd love to just pig out on this thing, but I'm going to give it a shot. And like I said, it is definitely, you know, it stayed together okay, but cutting it up, it's definitely uh, falling apart a little bit, but everything's there. Certainly smells good. And honestly, I could have even left this in just a little bit longer. It's it's um I'm totally okay with it, but it is in the middle fold of this meat. It is like really medium rare, almost rare, so um you know maybe you could do a little bit hotter or less hot of an oven or hotter oven, I don't know. Kinda of have to play around with that. That's always kind of the trick with cooking with stuffed stuff like that but okay, I'm gonna give this a shot with some onions cream cheese oh my gosh that is good that white label musket powder mixed with the cream cheese onions meat all of that absolutely delicious I'm gonna take a break from talking for a minute and eat some of this because it's so good my goodness, is that good. So, thank you guys for watching this video. I'm obviously not a professional chef. I don't have a big, huge professional kitchen with all sorts of, you know, awesome cooking tools and stuff like that. But I just like to share what I do with Wild Game. You know, that's obviously a huge, important part of the process is once we have a successful hunt or a successful day in the water, you know, what do you do with the meat afterwards? And I just like to give some ideas of what you can try. Again, venison is delicious on its own. You do not need to wrap it in bacon. You do not need to stuff it with cream cheese and all sorts of wild things. This is just something I tried today for fun. It's absolutely delicious, don't get me wrong, but venison is great on its own. Don't think you have to do something like this. You can just a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, fire. That's really all you need. That if I could only cook backstrap one way for the rest of my life, that would be it. But this wasn't a backstrap, and I really, really love that musket powder. It's truly good on just about everything. Potatoes, vegetables, um, even the black label. If you grill pineapple on it, it's absolutely amazing. It's just a really unique blend with um, brown sugar and coffee-based, and it's just really, really good. So if you want to give them a try, I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to them down below, as well as the de facto knives. I really like using them as well. So thank you guys for watching this recipe. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'll be cooking some more stuff up. I got a freezer full of bear meat. I'm running out of deer. Um, and we got some ducks and squirrels and random things in there as well. So I'll be cooking those up. And hunting season is fast approaching. Food plot time is here. Um, I'll still be doing some trout fishing. I got a big trip planned to Colorado in the next couple weeks. So keep an eye out for that. But until then, thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.